The fact that I can now tell myself that every time a girl's told me she was just too tired, she was probably telling the truth is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. We all know that there's a lot of differences between men and women, and those differences are really big when we start talking about the brain. Now, before I get going, there's really no such thing as like men and women's brains that have specific differences. All of our brains exist on a scale, almost like it's possible that gender is fluid. But that said, men and women's brains do tend to develop differently and, and exhibit very different structures and traits. And one of these biggest traits is that men's brains tend to function more as isolated sections. We tend to have pieces of our brains that do specific jobs more or less independently from the rest of our brain. Women's brains, on the other hand, show a lot more interconnectivity and plasticity, which means different sections of their brain often work together to accomplish the same tasks. And this is the reason that women tend to be more empathetic, emotionally intelligent, are better at multitasking. It's because they can process multiple pieces of information together at the same time. Basically, what I'm saying is that women are, you know, smarter than us. And the differences are pretty dramatic too. Women can process information up to five times faster than men while using less of their brain to do it. And women's brains on average are just pretty dramatically faster, more efficient, and more flexible than men's. Which honestly begs the question, women, why, why are you still letting us do stuff? Like, we've been running the show the whole time, and clearly we're we, we are not great at it. Now I find out this whole time, y'all have been smart enough to just trick us into turning the world into Themyscira, and, and you haven't done it. Like, I feel like if Melania really wanted to be best, she could have given Donald Trump a Fisher-Price toy with, like, a light-up red button on him and told him that was, like, the nuclear codes and then given him, like, a little playroom that, that sort of looks like the Oval Office and then she could have just went and ran the country not into the ground. What the fuck are y'all waiting for? Clearly we can't be trusted to make good decisions. Save us from ourselves. Give us Amazonia. Can't be any worse than the, what we've been doing. And, and you know what? I feel like a lot fewer people would complain about the death penalty if it was death by snoo snoo. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. So, so why is it that men and women's brains are wired in such weirdly different ways? And while there's still a lot of research to be done and there's a few different theories, the evolutionary thought is that women's brains aren't exactly all they're cracked up to be. Because it turns out all of that increased efficiency, plasticity, interconnect Activity and brain power has some burdens. First is just vulnerability. Women's brains, because of their interconnectivity, seem to be more physically fragile. Basically what I'm saying is that men can suffer like a, a lot of, of brain damage and, and you can't even tell the difference. And look at look at RFK. Where like when women suffer brain damage, they, they become Marjorie Taylor Green. Which honestly, those two really aren't that different, but but the difference is drastic when you compare MTG to a woman with a a f fully functional brain. And this is thought to be because where men's brains operate in a more isolated fashion, one part of the brain can sustain damage without crashing the whole system. Where women who have greater interconnectivity through the whole brain get damage in one part and it affects the way the whole thing functions. And this evolutionarily makes a lot more sense, right? Back in our caveman days, men were a lot more likely to get hit in the head with clubs and kicked in the head with hooves than women were. Meanwhile, women had to learn how to multitask taking care of children, gathering food that wasn't going to kill them or their children or the men off figuring out how to kill other stuff just all around keeping their communities running so they sacrifice some physical resilience for increased intelligence but the downsides don't stop there unfortunately because all of that increased processing power means they're processing a lot more information in the same amount of time and that comes with the downside of a lot more emotional wear and tear in the form of stress anxiety and depression see for example men will process information in front of them and only be able to focus on that specific information they tend to just take in that direct information and the variables that affect it and and solve for x so to speak. But women take in that same information, not only are they seeing that information and solving for X like men are, but they're also considering the implications of Y and Z. How is the information they're receiving going to affect other people not directly involved? What could be the unforeseen consequences of changing other variables? How are these variables making other people who are not me directly feel? And that can add a lot of stress because, you know, they're processing a lot more information. They're putting on five times more miles than men are for the same amount of information they're receiving. And then there's the fact that brain power requires, well, power. Your brain consumes a lot of energy, and the more you use it, the more energy it consumes. This is why you can sit on your ass all day long doing something not physically exertive, but absolutely exhausting, like studying for a big test, and you are just wrecked at the end of the day. Because your body or your brain has consumed a ton of energy. So with women's brains being more efficient and flexible at processing information, they're processing more information, which means their brain is working more, which means they're consuming more energy. Which is why when she says she's too tired, she's 
she's probably not lying to you to get out of the best 30 seconds you can muster. I mean, she might be still, but you know, she's got some reasonable, plausible deniability now. This has actually been clinically observed that women need roughly about 20 more minutes of sleep every night than men. And at the end of the day, they're probably going to be suffering a bit more fatigue than men on average as well. So just remember, sometimes she really does need that nap and it's not because you are just utterly exhausting to her. And next time she's stressed or anxious and you just can't wrap your head around why, all you have to do is remember that's just because her brain's doing five times more than, than yours is. And ultimately, we don't need to understand why she's feeling that way, we just need to help her not feel that way. And the fact that females' mighty minds can manage massively more than men while only needing a few minimal more minutes on the mattress, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.